Okay, a 100 watt equivalency LED light bulb, uh, 1680 lumens uh, from Philips. So another sign that the uh, LED market uh, is maturing. Not too many 100 watt equivalent units on the market yet. Uh, the price of this one is $30, so it's still kind of far from being a mass market uh, pricing, but uh, encouraging. It's uh, about half the price that they were just uh, earlier this year in uh, 2013. Uh, other big change, of course, Philips seems to be moving away from uh, showing the remote yellow phosphors on the surface of the bulb. I'm sure that was causing consumers uh, some confusion. It sure didn't look like a white bulb when it was powered off, but also not very attractive. So, um, although the bulb shape remains similar to a previous bulb, which did have the remote phosphors, when tearing down these bulbs, it's always good to uh, see how they pair, compare to their peers. Uh, now, uh, here's an incessant light bulb, because there actually isn't a lot of peers in the 100 watt space. Certainly not at $30 I just paid. Uh, in fact, that it must be a class-leading price right now. So, again, real sign of aggression on Phillips' part. They definitely want to win this market. Okay, let's talk about light quality. Uh, I have a bulb here, of course, and a uh, spectrometer. Uh, sounds very fancy. Uh, let's zoom into the output of the computer here. We'll turn the bulb on. And what we'll see is it'll actually plot the intensity of the light. Uh, blue down here. And, of course, red up here. And then uh, you can see the three individual spectra lines shown by this. Now, uh, this sounds like a very fancy tool, but actually it uh, cost me absolutely zero dollars to create. Uh, there is a group or individual, uh, spectralworkbench.org. Uh, he gets a wonderful uh, paper template, and you have this uh, free software. You can actually get spectral graphs from it. Uh, now you can see, of course, I've actually uh, come up with a uh, slightly more uh, robust construction uh, with uh, the paper template. Uh, it, Repeatable results are very hard, but uh, uh, making it out of metal, of course, there's the little slot here. And the refraction grating is made out of uh, just a cut in half a DVD. So uh, it gets a real, it's a really interesting tool to play with, seeing how the bulb spectra look. Okay, so uh, let's take the uh, look at the Phillips bulb first here. Uh, here's the screenshot of it, and here we have the, the red, the green, and the blue peaks. Uh, let's compare that uh, with uh, this bulb here. Of course, it's the standard 100 watt incandescent bulb. And uh, here are the peaks here, uh, the red, the green, the blue. Um, if you look closely, it seems like the uh, blue uh, is slightly lower on the incandescent, which suggests that maybe the Philips LED bulb is slightly uh, cooler. Um, and then, just for something completely different, uh, a compact fluorescent bulb. And uh, here's a spectra for that. And uh, this is very, very different, actually. And uh, I wouldn't have expected that. So, well, the next test is to see how light comes out of the bulb. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're trying to replace an old incandescent, it'd be great if the light came out in the exact same pattern. That way you'd be assured that it would uh, be a good fit. Uh, LED bulbs are quite variable, however. Uh, some are a little bit more downward firing uh, than uh, others. So, uh, again, a bit of uh, amateur science. It's very easy to actually find these patterns out. They never show them on the boxes, unfortunately. So, um, but with the light meter, uh, what's obvious here is a polar graph when you can put the bulb at a fixed point and uh, record the uh, the uh, light intensity around at various angles. And uh, you can see there's two sets of numbers in this graph because I did uh, uh, both the uh, the incandescent bulb because uh, we're comparing it to this Phillips bulb. And uh, eventually, you take those numbers and you put them into uh, a spreadsheet like Excel. You can get uh, a graph of uh, the light intensity. Uh, obviously, uh, this is the center point of the graph. The further away you are from the uh, center point, the greater the light output. So, uh, the plot on the very outer side is the LED bulb, and then the one on the inside is the incandescent. So, it's the first sort of thing you note is that this Phillips bulb actually uh, is producing more light than this 100 watt LED, which is good. Uh, more importantly, however, uh, is the intensity. Uh, you can see, of course, the bulbs, both bulbs actually tend to produce more light on the sides than they do on the front. And um, the pattern, however, for the Phillips is, is quite consistent, quite good. And um, the incandescent actually seems to have a bit of an inner lobe here. I wonder if that's a measurement error, because this actually should be relatively consistent around the axes. So, a uh, key takeaway, though, of course, is that this light, uh, and no surprise, uh, is doing a very good job of emulating uh, an A-shaped light bulb. Next question is uh, dimmability. The bulb set is dimmable on the back. Unfortunately, it says you can only use certain kinds of dimmers, which is kind of crazy. Um, this is a non-qualified dimmer. It was bought well before uh, the era of LED light bulbs, but let's see how it dims. And it's quite good. Okay, uh, now perhaps you actually want to go out and buy an LED dimmer. Uh, I went out and bought one myself. It's uh, just over $30, so they're really expensive. 
But let's see if uh, the LED dimmers are any better than just simply one that's off the shelf. Okay, um, now it's probably quite hard because this camera is doing uh, auto light uh, scaling, but um, at the very low end, these LED dimmers actually do seem to produce a slightly better result. Okay, power consumption. Uh, and of course, this is the reason why uh, incandescent bulbs have now been banned, at least where I live. Uh, this is uh, drawing 20.2 watts, so it's actually drawing above what the box says. Uh, the box says 19 watts. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. Uh, but more importantly, uh, it's drawing one-fifth the amount of electricity and clearly producing more light than that old incandescent light bulb that we looked at. And of course, this is why the world's changing. Um, in terms of power factor correction, it looks like it's power factor corrected, 0.92. Okay, so I've waited a uh, fair time here, actually. The bulb's quite warm now, uh, and it's still drawing one watt higher than uh, what it uh, has on its uh, packaging. So I guess the only discouraging thing I can find in this bulb so far. Okay, next question is uh, a parameter called flicker. Uh, LED light bulbs, certainly some of the really uh, poorly designed ones, have a considerable flicker, which would be quite annoying. A very easy way to test for it is an inexpensive solar cell connector and oscilloscope probe. Uh, the bulb here, of course, I'll just turn up the brightness. And uh, you can look at the graph on an oscilloscope, which uh, plots the, uh, the voltage versus the time, of course. Uh, if you have a lot of flicker, you'll see a very characteristic pattern. I'll just turn the light bulb up here. And... Uh, Yet again, um, on the Phillips bulbs, there's almost no perceptible flick. Okay, another interesting uh, data point in the evolution of uh, LED light bulbs, uh, the rapid evolution. Uh, this bulb was just a little under $30 for a 100 watt equivalency, and certainly all the testing here says that it's a, a pretty decent replacement for uh, that kind of bulb. Just a few short months ago, these bulbs, uh, there's there's very few 100 watts equivalencies on the market, and they were uh, upwards of almost $60 to $70, so... 50% uh, price drop in a matter of months, and of course, if uh, tradition holds here, uh, these will become eventually fairly affordable. Now, uh, I'm not going to do a teardown of this bulb, because quite frankly, I got $30. I'm going to put this one in service. Um, it looks pretty good, and I make use of it um, in my home.